One thing that I personally struggled with a lot throughout my physics degree is knowing exactly when it's okay to ask for help. Like I've said in previous videos, so much of learning physics is learning what ways don't work and being able to identify exactly why that couldn't be a solution. And it can almost give you a sense of feeling robbed if someone takes that away from you and just says that's the right way to do it. So in this video, I wanted to share my perspective as to when I think it's okay to throw in the towel, so to speak, and ask someone what you're doing wrong. And I'd like to preface all this by saying that on top of being a physics student, I'm also a physics and math tutor, so I spend a lot of my day being told by people I don't get it. And from my experience as a tutor, one of the most frustrating things is trying to help someone who doesn't really know what their question is. And what I'm speaking of is when someone comes to me and they say, I don't get it. And I say, okay, well, what don't you understand? And they respond with all of it. What that tells me is that you haven't been stuck long enough. You don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know that, then you can't articulate to me where your knowledge is failing you. Being able to tell someone what you've tried lets them know what relationships you think exist, what connections between concepts you think are fundamental to the problem. And only someone who has gotten stuck in a problem and tried different ways of getting out will be able to do that. So say for example, you're in University Physics 2. And your problem is to use Gauss's law to calculate the electric field uh, of some point charge some distance away. Now, when you go to solve this problem, if your mind goes blank, that's not the time to ask for help. That's never the time to ask for help. That's when you dissect the problem even further. What is Gauss's law? Oh, well, I know that it's relating the surface integral to the charge density. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, if I'm using Gauss's law, that should mean that there's a symmetry of the problem that I can exploit. Identify that symmetry. So just start trying things. And if your problem is that you really, really don't know where to start, that means you're not ready to solve problems yet. That means you need to go back to the textbook and read more about the concepts. You need help with concepts, not problem solving at that point. But there's going to be a point, there's going to be some problem where you're going through it and then you just get flat out stuck. And this brings us to the question of how long should you let yourself be stuck for? And in my opinion, the length of time you let yourself be stuck for depends on what year physics student you are. If you're a first year physics student, I would say don't let yourself be stuck for more than half an hour before asking for help. And this is because you probably don't have the physics intuition yet to logic check yourself to see what would you expect the answer to be. So much of it is just going to be too new. There are so many gaps that you might have when you first start out with physics. Like for example, you might not know that you can't solve one equation that has two unknowns in it without having some other constraint or something like that to impose on it. These are things that just, everyone's a little bit different with what they're already bringing to the table. The important thing is to keep track of what you tried and try your best to explain to yourself why you thought that was worth trying. What relationship you thought those two equations had to each other. Because that's something either your professor, your TA, your tutor is going to need from you in order to help you. And I know it might sound a little unfair, like why should you have to be able to explain something that you're just now learning? It might sound at first like I'm saying, well, if you knew what the problem was, then you wouldn't need help with the question in the first place. What I'm trying to say is that it's just easier to steer something that's already moving. I can't point you in a direction if I don't know what direction you're already heading down. So if and when you get stuck in your first year, take that next half hour to try things, write down what you've tried, write down what you know, and write down what you think you know. And that's going to help whoever you ask for help so much more. Now, the further you are in your physics degree, I think the longer you should allow yourself to be stuck. And part of this is because if you're in your first year, you know, the equations that you solve might be one or two lines. It doesn't take long to try to finish a thought in, uh, in introductory physics. But as you go deeper and deeper, it can take, you know, close to an hour to see where your logic is going to take you. And more often than not, you shouldn't just try one thing. You should try a few things. So the time really adds up and it becomes more of a gray area. So because as you go deeper in your physics degree, it takes longer to finish your thought mathematically. And it also will take longer for you to explain to yourself each step why you thought that was the right thing to do. 
I would say honestly, if you're in you know third, fourth year physics, to let yourself be stuck for around maybe two and a half, three hours before asking for help. Now, I think that's a bit of an upper bound, but the longer you're a physics student, I think the more you can benefit from being stuck. I think it really forces you to see if you understand what you're doing at a fundamental level. And after roughly that much time has gone by and I go to ask my professor, I like to start with what I understand. So I, I go to that person and I say, I understand this, I understand this, this might be where my problem was. I'm not sure if I can assume that the current density is time independent or something like that. And then your professor has something to go off of. They can say, oh, okay, you don't have a hard time necessarily deriving the entire electromagnetic wave equation. You need clarification on current density. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. So you can see how it really helps chisel down what your problem area is if you struggle with it for a while. I know it sucks. I know some people might disagree with that, but it, I just think it's absolutely essential to let yourself be wrong for a while. So let yourself get stuck for a little bit longer, solidify the physics that you are certain of, and emphasize the thing that you really don't know. So more generally, what I'm trying to say is let yourself be stuck until you're at the point to where you can ask an intelligible question. That applies much more to upperclassmen, and if you are a Physics 1 or Physics 2 student, try your best to articulate what you don't understand to yourself. If you give yourself half an hour to do this, you will make progress in finding out what you don't know, and this will give your professor a lot to go off of. So I hope you guys found this video a little bit helpful. I made it mostly because I used to have a really, really hard time asking for help. So I would go way past the two hour mark and just fixate on where I was stuck and just be too stubborn to say I didn't know what to do next. So this video is also for people who might view asking questions as giving up or kind of raising your hand and saying, all right, you beat me this time. So asking questions is completely fine. We all need help sometimes with this stuff. I mean, it's, it's physics. So which type are you? Are you the type that asks questions a little bit too early or the kind that asks questions a little bit too late? Let me know in the comment section and I'll see you guys there.